Welcome to Dilemma Rich Techie. Today I'll be showing you how to configure VLANs on Juniper switches and also how to assign these newly created VLANs to specific interfaces. For today's session, we're only going to have a look at layer 2 functionality, meaning there will be no routing involved, which is typically referred to as layer 3. If you aren't familiar with the different layers when it comes to networking, I've included a link in the description below that explains the Aussie layer in a bit more detail. For today's video, all you need to know is that layer 1 pertains to the physical connectivity side, and layer 2 refers to the data layer. Even though we will be pinging IP addresses to test for connectivity, all hosts are situated in the same network or subnet, and that means that all communication will actually take place on a MAC address level. If all of that sounds a bit confusing to you, don't fret. I will be doing a lot of videos on this subject in this series, so the further we go, the more I'll explain. So now's a good time to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more networking tutorials. Right, so we're going to start with a virtual setup here. So I'm just going to run through it quickly. You'll see at the top here, I've got four hosts. So these are actually Windows servers, virtual servers. And I've got the IP addresses defined as the name underneath. So we have 192.168.0.10, 0.11, 0.12, and 0.13. So these two hosts are connected to a QFX switch, a Juniper QFX. And the QFX in turn is connected to a packet forwarding engine. Okay, so in the virtual environment, you've got a separation for the routing engine. That's why it says uh, RE and PFE is the packet forwarding engine. And then that switch connects to another switch on this side. We named it QFX2. Uh, the same story applies here. We've got QFX2 RE routing engine and QFX2 PFE for packet forwarding engine. Right, and these hosts are then connected to the, the switch here on interface XE000 and XE001. And the same applies on this side. Okay, so at this point in time, only the physical connectivity has been established. We haven't done any configuration on the switch side. And uh, just to showcase that, we'll log on to one of these servers here. And I'm just going to open up a command prompt here. So you'll see that I will be able to ping myself 0 0.10, but anything outside of that, I'm not able to ping. Okay. Just uh, doing a little demo here. All right, so no response from any of the other hosts. So now we have to have a look at our uh, switch config. So we can just uh, click on QFX1. Uh, I use the secure CRT as a terminal application. We're just going to log in here with the preset username and password. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter CLI and this will bring us into operational mode. Okay, so for these tests, we'll actually go into uh, config mode or configurational mode. You can do that other by typing edit or you can type configure. Okay, so if we have a look at what the config looks like at the moment, we can just do a show pipe display set and this shows you all the config that's currently configured on the box. As you can see, my XE interfaces, XE000 and XE001, there is no config for that. The only interfaces that have config are EM0 and EM1, but that is required for the internal connection between the routing engine and the packet forwarding engine. Okay, first things first, what we need to do is we need to create a VLAN. And for this example, I'm just going to create a VLAN 10. So we can just go into edit VLANs. You do set, you type in the VLAN name, which we will use VLAN 10 and say VLAN ID 10. And this is just for easy identification. Now, this doesn't uh, mean anything yet. We still won't have any communication between our a host. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to assign interfaces to this VLAN. Okay, and as we said, it is XE001 and XE000. So what we do is you just uh, type in set interfaces XE000, not like that, but like this. And we're going to configure unit zero, which is a logical unit. But for family ethernet switching, we will use unit zero only. Okay, so unit zero, and we're going to specify family ethernet switching. 
and then we're going to specify the VLAN. So VLAN members, VLAN 10. Okay. If you're confused about the units, uh, don't be. It's just a, a logical unit at this point in time. And as I said, on switches for family Ethernet switching, we typically use unit zero. Once we start configuring family INET, where we actually assign in, uh, IP addresses to interfaces, then we'll start using different uh, unit numbers. Right, but for, for this lab, when it comes to switching only, uh, only focus on unit zero. All right, and then we can just uh, see if uh, that's everything that we need. We do a show pipe compare, and we can see that we've got X is zero, 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 and it is part of VLAN 10, which is the VLAN we created. Okay, then what we need to do next is we need to add the other interface, which is X is zero, zero, one. So we just repeat the same process. Set interface x is zero zero one unit zero family Ethernet switching VLAN members VLAN ten. Okay, so there is another option that you can configure here. So if we go into family Ethernet switching, you can specify the interface mode. If you uh, type in question mark, you've got access and trunk. By default, if you don't specify a interface mode, it will be configured as an access port. An access port is all we need at this point in time as the server themselves, they aren't configured for VLAN tagging. Okay, so we won't need the interface mode uh, statement here. And now if we do another show pipe compare, we can see that we've got both our interfaces now part of VLAN 10. Now, this uh, config is still not up and running. Uh, in Juniper, the running config and the candidate config are completely separate. So what we are doing is we're editing the candidate config. And for you to actually apply the changes, you need to have the candidate configuration as the running configuration. And to do that, you just type in commit. Okay. And if we now do a show pipe display set, we should see our newly created interfaces. Okay. Now, if we go back to our server here, we should be able to ping dot 11 now. And yes, we can. That's it again. And don't be too concerned about the latency. This is all being done in a virtual environment and latency is not, uh, is not an issue here. Uh, this is just to, to showcase the configuration. Obviously, if you're having these high uh, response times in a real deployment, then obviously there will be some issues. Right, so now what we've done is we've actually, we've created a VLAN on the switch. We've assigned these interfaces into that VLAN and we've established communication between these two servers. Now, what about the rest? Okay, as you've noticed, they are connected to a different switch over here. So we're basically just going to replicate the config. Just uh, for sanity's sake, what we can do on these interfaces over here. So if we go into top edit interfaces, we do a show. Just for easier identification, you can actually set a description. So we're just gonna XE000. We're gonna type in a description here. If your description contains any spaces, just uh, put it in inverted commas. So I'm just going to make it host one, 192.168.0.10. And we're going to do the same for interface x 001 if you're wondering how I autocomplete the uh, the statements I just press up and it'll repeat the last statement that I uh, that I typed so this will be host 2 and 0 0.11 okay we can just do another show pipe compare and you can see that we've added the descriptions so another nice feature about the Juniper is you can actually do a commit check a commit check doesn't apply the Canada config. 
it just uh, checks the config for any errors. And if you do a commit confirmed, um, it'll actually roll back the config within 10 minutes. So if I don't follow this up with the commit, then if after 10 minutes, the config will revert to the previous state. Okay, this is actually very useful for when you're doing remote configs and you accidentally lock yourself out of the router or switch. All right, so now we can actually just go back to, to the other switch. We can just uh, open Secure CRT again and the process will be exactly the same. I'm just gonna do it a little bit quicker this time. I'm just gonna log in here. So firstly, we're going to create the VLAN going to name it the same because we just want VLAN 10 across all switches, VLAN ID 10. Instead of typing unit zero, you can actually just type in dot zero as well. Okay, and we're just going to repeat this for the next interface. Right, and now we have uh, these two interfaces in the same VLAN. All right, we're just gonna do a commit. And if we log on to dot .12 here, we should be able to ping dot thirteen. Right, and uh, there we go. So, are we able to ping dot 10? No. Okay, the reason why we're not able to ping dot 10 is this interface here is still missing from the VLAN configuration. Okay, so to, to do that, we've got both QFXs open here. So we just go set interfaces X is 002, unit zero family, Ethernet switching. VLAN members, VLAN 10. And we can just do the same here. Okay, so now, if we do a run show VLANs, we'll see that all three interfaces are now in VLAN 10 on QFX2. And if we do a run show VLANs, we'll see that all three of these interfaces are in VLAN 10 on switch one. So technically, there shouldn't be any issue for us to be able to ping dot 10. Right, so what have we achieved in this? Let's just go back to um. So what we've done is we've configured VLAN 10 on this switch. We've configured VLAN 10 on this switch. We've spanned that same VLAN across both these switches. Then these two interfaces here are in VLAN 10 and these two interfaces here are also in VLAN 10. And that just means that all these hosts here now form part of the same network and they are able to reach each other. Right, so getting back to what I said about this being a pure layer two scenario, even though we do ping the hosts on their IP addresses, what you need to understand is that because they are all in the same subnet, this is a slash 24 subnet, meaning that all addresses from zero up until 255 fall in the same network, and those hosts in that network will be able to reach each other without any routing involved. And the way it does it is by using ARP which is address resolution protocol. Right, so we are on dot 12 here. I'm just going to open dot 10 here as well. So these two servers here are on different switches. If we, if we do a ping 192.168.0.11, this will be a ping to a host on the same switch. And if we do it to dot 12, it will be a host on a different switch. Okay. To check the op entries on a Windows machine, you can just do 
op minus a. And here you'll see that the local machine actually has a MAC address assigned to an IP address. And this is what the host machine uses to communicate with the remote machine. You are trying to reach 0 0.11. This host will actually do an ARP lookup, see that this is the MAC address I need to communicate with, and all communication takes place on a MAC level. Now you'll notice that there aren't any MAC entries for dot 13. And the reason for that is we haven't communicated with dot 13 as yet. If we now do a ping 192.168.0.13 and it responds, we do another ARP minus A, then you'll see that we've got an ARP entry for dot 13. All right, and that's basically what I wanted to show you. I just want to explain one other thing. If you have a look on these QFX switches, if we have a look at XE002, you'll notice that I also made that an access interface. The reason for that is we only pass one single VLAN between these two switches in this scenario. So an access interface is actually fine. The moment we have more than one VLAN that need to traverse these switches, we'll convert this interface to a trunk port and a trunk port will allow us to configure multiple VLANs on that interface. Right, and that concludes our lab for today. We just wanted to show you layer two functionality between switches and between hosts connected to the same switch. In our next video, we'll explore multiple VLANs and we'll also introduce some routable interfaces. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you guys on the next one.